everyone in this place lift up your hands because it's important for you to prepare yourself for the encounters that God wants you to have in your life I want you to say this prayer say Lord Jesus you are the king that's in our midst my heart is open I'm willing to put aside every mindset that does not agree with your word or your spirits. I open up, Lord, and I say yes to encounters. I need encounters in my life. I don't want to talk about what used to be. I want to talk about what you're doing now. Lord, in Jesus' name, release a hunger in my heart for more of you in my life. Come on, give them glory. Give them glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to minister this evening, spend some time with you on rising up in a new strength through God encounters. I was thinking about Pastor Art's sermon yesterday. You take away God and that encounter with Gideon in his life, there wouldn't have been no exploits. It took that encounter that he had with God. I think of Jacob, who was running for his life, literally afraid and wanting to send gifts ahead of time in order to appease the anger of his brother Esau because he really thought he's as good as a dead man. And in the midst of that, and all the struggle that he had, there was an encounter that he had that Jacob will never, ever be the same again. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord, and his name was changed no longer to Jacob because he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Encounters, you think about David before he faced Goliath. Before he could ever kill Goliath, he needed a God encounter supernaturally to empower him to take down the lion and the bear. Encounters are needed today more than ever. Can anyone say amen to that? Listen, church, we've been flirting way too long on shallow ground, shallow waters. We've been sufficient and satisfied to the point like uh, whatever that looks like in your life, whatever that discipline or that devotion is, I'm here to say God says he wants to tear them down and he wants to build something new in your life. You say, well, I'm kind of comfortable where I'm at. Comfortable people will never have the God, have the God encounters in their life. You have to be disrupted. You have to allow him to disrupt you, disrupt your devotional life, disrupt your sleep, disrupt anything and everything at any given time as you're driving. He can say, pull over over here, you got some time, and God can give you a God encounter right there in your vehicle, and the Holy Ghost will show up, and it'll be powerful, it will be life-changing. So in a moment, I'll read my text, but I'm going to tell you about four things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Revelation. I'm going to talk about isolation, I'm going to talk about concentration, and I'm going to talk about demonstration. And lastly, I'm going to wrap it up with the reality of the flesh. Are you ready? Mark's Gospel, chapter 9. How many are hungry already? Are you hungry? Okay, five of us. Hallelujah. The rest of us, you said the prayer, so you're jumping on board. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9 verses 1 through 9 NIV reads like this and he said to them 
Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is, a good, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. First thing I want to talk to you about is the importance of revelation. An encounter with God will always lead to a revealing, a revelation. And most of the times, it's going to deal with you. Before God can talk to you about someone else, he needs to talk to you about you, first of all. Because if you can't hear him when he's talking to you about you, basically, he cannot trust you with something pertaining to someone else. Revelation. There's going to be an unveiling that God chooses to do. I look back at all my encounters that I've had throughout the years. I know what it is to be feeling on the mountaintop, but I also know the valley and I know the shadow of death. And I'm telling you, God is still God in the midst of whatever season you're in. He's still God. But I think about the importance of revelation. That God will show you where you're at, what you're lacking, what you need, and how to get it and how to get it it's not pretty it's kind of ugly it's kind of full of tears it's kind of like uh, getting saved all over again and you repenting of things in your life because there's an unveiling that's taking place and God is giving you this encounter first with you why is that important at least what I've learned is that before God can entrust you he first has to reveal you and it takes courage to face it it takes courage to face it because man looks at the outward but God really already knows us he looks at the heart right the encounters in my life throughout the years, I tell you one thing after another, but I also understand that there are seasons that you can be walking under an open heaven. And all of a sudden, there are things that used to take long for you to see. God does it literally quickly. Within days, within a week, that that took so long to see and that was being delayed. I remember years ago we were in, in, in Africa and I remember talking to Pastor Emmanuel and he was telling me his experience of a vision. I had never encountered God and had the experience of having a vision. At this time I'm walking under this uh, encounter with God and he's telling me and I said tonight I'm staying up and I'm going to have me a vision. God's giving me a vision. While you're sleeping God's giving me a vision. He said alright catch you later. He fell asleep. I got my first vision. My God, I was like, wow, this is awesome. A vision, never had a vision before. They didn't know what that looked like. Heard about other people having vision. And I said, I believe in it, Lord. Why don't I have it? But there's a sense of saying, okay, God, first he had to deal with me before he can entrust what he wants to reveal. And so by that particular time, I had already done everything I needed to do that God was revealing in my life and dealing with me in my life. And it prepared me for the more. You see, here, the disciples are getting a revelation. They're seeing 
in the unseen world. They're seeing literally two come from heaven that they represented the Old Testament, the time of the prophets and the time of the law. They're there, Moses, and they describe that they could be identified and they're there with Jesus and they got picked to be part of it. Watch this, or you, or you missed this. Jesus was the one that called them to follow him. He took them. The only way God can take you where he wants to show you is that you have to be available. You don't pray. You're not even in the list. You're not even in the list. You didn't make the list. You have to be already in prayer. You already have to be faithful in some form of devotion that you have the, a hunger that is saying, God, I'm ready. I'm going to put my doubts aside, my unbelief aside. And here is your servant. I'm ready, Lord. I want more. I hunger for more. I desire more in my life. Jesus took him and he gave him a revelation. It's amazing how I look back in life and sometimes um, when it comes to encounters because many people don't experience them once people start talking about them they look at them as weird because they want to base their own experiences as that is the measure God help us God help us God, like Pastor Robert was saying, the scripture in Ephesians, he can do exceedingly and abundantly whatsoever we can ask or think of him. So if you want a God encounter in your life, you got to be available. He cannot give you revelation if you're not available. That means that the Spirit of God, when you said this prayer today and this message is being set forth in the Spirit now, there's going to come a calling and a bidding from the Spirit and He's going to call you to go deeper. Can He take you where He wants to lead you? Can He say, follow me? I'm going to do something different in your life. Can He do that? Because it might happen at 2 o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, bam, your eyes go open. It's like, really, Lord? Well, you said that prayer, didn't you? Yeah, but that was a Starbucks talking. You know, I, I thought I wanted that. I don't know if I want to pay that price now. Why? Because the reality, we think about our sleep. We think about our rest. We think about, I'm here to tell you, God can only take you to these places if he can take you because you're available. You've been praying. You've been hungry. You've been saying, I need more of God. I want more of God. I'm hungry and I'm thirsting for God. As a deer panteth after the water broke, my soul thirsteth after God. We got too much DVR today. Favorite this, favorite that. Go here, go there. We know what you're passionate about because we know what you light up about whenever it's being talked about. He wants to take you to places you haven't been to. Listen, more than ever, we need our young people to have greater encounters than we had ourselves for the preparation of the biggest battle yet to come. You believe that? It's amazing. Don't stone me. Don't throw stones at me. Some young people can devote hours to gaming. And very little to God. He can't take you unless you put your control down. Oh yeah, I'm pushing you tonight. I have to. I'm on a mission, man. I have to. I have to. Because what God is going to give you exceeds any game you ever did great in, any experience you ever been. What God's going to give you is going to be much better than you ever experienced with anything else in your life. 
you'll get hooked and you start becoming a glory chaser that's another sermon in itself I'm gonna leave it for another time I'm gonna leave it for another time because I got I got to finish this thing what's the second thing isolation I'm not talking about the isolation when people isolate themselves and they're getting all weird and they're going all strange you know but I'm talking about the isolation that when people want to fellowship, if the Spirit is bidding for something else, you don't have to advertise it. You just say, I would like to, but I'm kind of busy right now. You have to be willing to isolate yourself in those moments, in those seasons that the Spirit of God is bidding you and He wants to take you. While everyone else is playing, you're praying. Isolation. Are you with me? You see, that's the thing about the Spirit of God. He doesn't do it according to our timetable. He doesn't do it according to our liking. He says, you either want it or you don't. I got other people I can go with right now. It's up to you. It's up to you. I'm not... I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to argue. I'm not, I, got, I don't got time for that right now. There's other people that are praying, other people that are calling, other people that are pursuing me. I can easily visit them. Huh? And it'll pass you by. Imagine what could have been, but it wasn't. Are you willing? Are you willing? Because he desires to activate God encounters in your life. I'll go as far as to say this. He wants that more than we want it. Listen to what I just said. Because God understands but there's an unveiling that takes place in a person's life and they begin to get right with God literally in anything and everything in their life. There's going to be an opportunity to raise up a powerhouse, someone that's going to be different, someone that's going to care about the Lord, someone that's going to do what the Father bids us to do. Man, it's too soon. I already started. My God. Isolation want it have to be willing to press in more than your 15 minutes more than your half hour more than an hour that leads me to third of all concentration so what do you do pastor when you're waiting for this encounter pray you're seeking him you just put that time aside. You're allowing yourself to be isolated, just you and God, and, and you want this revelation. And so what you're doing now, you're concentrating in the Spirit. The Bible says to build up our most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. So you begin to pray in the Spirit. You press in in the Spirit. And you press in, in the, and then some understanding comes in. And you start praying in the understanding. And you press in further. And you press in further. And what happens is uh, there's a concentration that takes place. And there's a breaking of all distractions. You start honing in, I call it. I call it you start getting in the zone. And you know what it feels like when you hit it? Time has lost its meaning for you. And all of a sudden, you thought you were down for 15 minutes only to find out it's been hours. I know for some of you it sounds like I'm preaching French. Because you say, I've, I've never experienced anything like that. I know. That's why I'm preaching it. I know. Because God wants you to know there's so much more. Hallelujah. There's so much more available. There's so much more he wants to do. Why do we settle for religion? Why do we settle for the same old, same old? The calisthenics of doing church. I, I, as a young man in the, in the military, I, I remember 
a hunger just being born in me. I, it, I'm a follower, you know. Some other person said, let's have a prayer meeting. I go, sounds good to me. I'm in. I'm in. Me and a few other converts were going out with a seasoned individual that's been saved a while, and he's calling a prayer meeting. Little by little, some of them started exiting out after two and a half hours, but I'm still pressing in. I'm still believing God. I'm still hungry for God. I'm not giving up. I'm there, and then before you know it, an encounter took place. But it was only witnessed by two when it could have been witnessed by four. What were we doing different? Nothing, man. We were just praying in the Holy Ghost, concentrating, seeking his face. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Lord, I, I, I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to be your mouth. Now, what do we pray for? I need a car. I want a house. I want a wife. I want, this. I want a bigger house. I want a better car. They're not evil in themselves, but they become, for some, the goal of their life. I've always had this agreement with my wife that I, we agree. Said, Lord, don't give us anything we can't handle that's going to pull us away from you. Don't give us no blessing that's going to just kind of steal our hearts away that we get caught up on the blessing and we forget the blesser concentration it's not difficult you go in there I don't know how to start okay worship worship our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost we begin to worship we begin to honor him we begin to cleanse ourselves as we're doing there's a concentration that's taking place and before you know it you enter into the praying and the spirit you mix it with worship and you go back and forth it, it basically starts feeling to you like you had a week long revival but it's you and God your joy is restored you're smiling again, hallelujah. We serve a happy God. You got faith once more to believe, even in the difficult situations. Because God imparts in that encounter. He does. They got to see this. Let's go to the last point. And I move into some other things. The demonstration, if you read the rest of the chapter, he told them not to tell no one. We, we, we read that together. But you know what Jesus did? Right after that, he put them to work. They had to cast out some demons. Read it. Encounters are meant to thrust us into places of demonstration. Encounters are not meant so that we can gather together, have a potluck together, drink coffee over our encounters, compare notes concerning our encounters. No, they're meant to empower you, to move you, to direct you in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. The disciples waited for the baptism of the promise, right? what happened immediately when they were baptized they didn't get together and says okay we gotta have a potluck man we gotta talk about this experience <laughs> immediately fire evangelism and the Bible says they gave themselves, the apostles, to prayer and to the ministering of the word. They gave themselves in that sense of devotion. Why? Because they understood we've been empowered for a mission. We've been empowered to do something for God. It is not just so we can feel the goosebumps. It is not just for us to say, oh, I feel the spirit of the Lord moving. It is to move you in the direction to demonstrate God and his kingdom here on earth. 
that means when you pray for people, you say, I want to believe God can touch you right now. I want to believe God can heal you right now. And when they tell you, oh, I just don't know, they say, don't worry about it. I got enough faith for both of us right now. Because you start leaking in your life. You start literally dripping in so much of God in your life. It begins to be an overflow that's there. Why? Because the Spirit of God has literally got a hold of you to demonstrate His power. For who? For the lost to get saved. You know, the gifts are manifested imparted in God encounters. God will start activating the word of knowledge in some of you. Where you have direct knowledge over something in a person's life without them ever telling you that. And it is to put his power on display for the person to know there must be a God. How did you know that? Years ago I was on a plane coming back from Africa and it was one of those seasons and I was sitting in business class thank God for miles and upgrades and all those wonderful things I said Lord who are you going to sit me next to today and sat me next to this gentleman and I'm like okay Lord I, you know, let's just put your gifts on hold for a little bit right now it's been a, it's been a difficult journey I, I need a rest right now and all of a sudden as I was resting my eyes closed he starts showing me his life and I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do with that, Lord? So finally I said, okay, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Hi, how's it going? My name's so-and-so, what's your name? He told me his name. I began to talk to him about his family, about his daughter, about issues in his life. He's like, how do you know these things? I go, it's, it's, it, he, he cares about you. He wants you to know that he, he has a plan for your life. Church is about demonstration. But what good is it if you spend pressing in and you're not willing to do anything? I just want to bask in the glory. I just got my little move going on. This is what I do when he moves. When he moves, we have to move. We have to move. Demonstration. Believe that God can. Don't be afraid to ask that question. Can I pray for you for salvation? Some of us were so gun shy. I mean, when you have these God encounters, you literally feel like, man, I'm the mouthpiece of God right now. Hey, let's pray right now. And you'll have more yeses. Why? Because there's a time and a season for demonstration. Matter of fact, the workplace becomes the mission field. The moment they start seeing you come, they're going to start to go the other way right now. God will give you favor and you'll get saved you'll get saved so the Lord was reminding me as I was uh, getting over and going over some things as a young man and some of you here you're, you're a young adult you're fascinated with the supernatural listen to me very carefully it's important that you listen right God is not looking for a fascination. He's looking for a transformation. As a young man, I was always fascinated. And I, and I, and I wanted to see his, his power on display. I got to see things. I, I remember being in, in outreaches and literally pray, praying for someone. And the Holy Spirit literally knocked this person. Boom, they went flying. You can't even try to make that happen. You know, the common desire in the midst of not just a few, but a greater majority was wanting more of God. We need a shift to take place in all our churches. I said we need a shift to take place in all our churches. 
and we'll sense it there there are times we sense it in the atmosphere as we're worshiping and we can feel there's a shift that it's there god says the time has come that i want to bring a shifting in the lives of my people that they would understand their call to be glory carriers that you don't have to wait for the church service you're already primed up and ready to go lock and load have to wrap this up with the reality of the flesh these disciples if you ask me if anyone should understand or should have really felt the heartbeat of Jesus it should have been Peter it should have been John it should have been James they got to see the glory they got to see witnesses leave heaven and show up on earth they got to see it and Jesus reveals to them not to mention till after so there was already a sense of you know what's gonna happen but these same three disciples Jesus takes them on another occasion to a garden in Gethsemane and guess who are the three that end up falling asleep Peter John Could you not wait with me one hour? They were meant to have another encounter. They were meant to see something else, but their flesh, that's where the scripture gives us. Jesus said the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is weak. You know the reality of our flesh in our humanity? We can have powerful experiences but we can also hit rock bottom when it comes to our humanity our flesh and God begins to show you the reality of your flesh and the reality of your limitations no one ever lives on the mountaintop forever there has to be valleys there has to be caves there has to be battle but it's those encounters with God hallelujah that God all of a sudden begins to prepare you listen get ready because this upcoming week this is about to happen you'll be ahead of everything because you have these God encounters in your life and the devil won't be able to put a fast one on you so you'll be right in that place and I know what that feels like but I also know what it feels like to be so low because of the reality of the flesh. So far, so distant, even feeling somewhat illegitimate like Pastor Hart was talking about. Because of everything of your own humanity and your own struggles, because somehow we, we just kind of, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I believe we have to put in work just like Pastor Robert said do the work I understand all that but there are moments and there are seasons in our lives that God gives this revelation and this understanding that yes these encounters are there but every believer will have a moment or a few moments a time period of the reality of their own flesh will be evident and they're gonna know that it's not by might nor by power nor anything within ourselves but God is still God even in our weakness his strength can be perfected in us. I've seen God do things. And I said, God, I, I, I didn't even want you to do it. Because I feel so far from you. What do you do that for? Do it through someone else. You someone else. It's in the reality of our flesh that we begin to look at our humanity and our sense of what we're lacking and somehow we think mentally that that disqualifies you. I'm here to say the same God that breathes in you and gives you those encounters, He is right there in the reality of your flesh. <laughs> Prove it. He didn't condemn Peter, John, and just reminded them the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak 
He knew what they were going to become. He knew that. He knew once that baptism came, oh, look out, man. It's going to be a whole different story. Some of us were just content. I speak in tongues. Shoto Rabaka. Is that it? Is, this, is that your experience? Got baptized now. Oh, there's so much more. Church, I said there's so much more. I said there's so much more. So much more. I dare you to rise to a new strength through God. I dare you. Double dare you. Double dare you to let His Spirit lead you, take you. He's going to say, stay a while. Put your devotion aside, your own disciplines that you know. Just just give me time right now. But Lord, what about I got to be up at at this time and I got to go to work. Listen, supernaturally, God will empower you in such a way that two hours worth of sleep will be far greater than eight hours. Listen to what I'm saying supernaturally it doesn't make sense logically it doesn't add up reasoning wise you can't reason with it but supernaturally he empowers I was in the military and we would get random physical training tests exercise tests and I I I was kind of finding God and his humor and his ability and I, I would just I pray for something I just wanted to know if I can max out the push-ups and max out the sit-ups even though I hadn't maxed them out before and max out the pull-ups and, and and you know he gave me the desires of my heart and people that see me is like wait a minute you never do that many push-ups I am now huh <laughs> and, and, and it was because of an encounter an encounter with God. He told me he was going to do that just to baffle them. Because according to them, you know, they look at the outward. God supernaturally can do things in your life that will blow your mind. Blow your mind. And for some of you, you find yourself right now in some trying times. Listen to this. The worst of times can become the best of times. The worst of times can become the best of times in your life. Because it will lead you to your knees. It will lead you to want to get closer to God. I mean, doesn't the scripture say, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. Doesn't it say that? So there's a sense that God says, hey, those people that are looking to me, I got some supernatural power I can bestow upon them. I can raise them up and bring them as wings, as eagles right now. They're going to soar high above their circumstances. They're going to go further than they could before. They're going to do what they couldn't do before because supernaturally I will do that. Come on, let's begin to worship God. Give him glory right now. Give him glory. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Come on, everyone, stand to your feet. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Come on, worship God. 